Alright, yo, what's up, you dumbasses? It's me, TC, here for videos for the first time in forever. TC uploading videos? That never happens. Anyways, here I am, idiots. Here with my good pal. He goes by What Happens in Pokemon, aka Ian. Say hello and tell us your funniest joke. Uh, I'm assuming you introduced me, my voice cut out. <laughs> We're, we're not restarting this. Tell us your funniest damn joke, Ian. Who asks, who asks me to record at 3 in the morning? It's, it's DC. You in my defense, we tried, dude. That's an hour ago, but I suck. Anyways, let's get into this. Uh, I'm going to do weeks 1 to 3, which you can see in the title. Uh, not going to do a draft analysis, because I cause screw those. Uh, let me see if I can name my team off the top of my head, not gonna look. Uh, I have Latios, Necrozma, Mandibuzz, Chestnut, uh, I have Rotom. What's my tier 4? I don't know. Mega Gardevoir is on here. Talonflame! I have Talonflame. Uh, then Manaphy, uh, what else do I have? Did you, did you, say, did you say Steelix yet? Steelix, I got Steelix. Mian Shao, and one more. Who's my last one? I don't remember. Anyways, I don't know. one more. Who cares? Is it on this team? I don't have the fuck. Not on this team. Anything. Who cares? Irrelevant mod. Anyways, uh, gonna go through teams quickly. Gonna go through games quickly. I hate when people take an hour for a game that took 20 turns. Uh, shout out to Jake and Gypsy King, the biggest, uh, biggest offenses of this crime. Anyways, <laughs> week one. Is <laughs> week one is actually against your boy. What happens in Pokemon? Ian MC 97. Uh, we're gonna go through this team insanely quick. So his team is Celesteela, which is a Z user, Needle Queen, Primarina, Zygar, Tan, Rotom, Rapidash, Mega Kingscon, Latias, Z user, Titara, Selgor, Z user, and Sableye. Uh, biggest threats to my team, I'd say uh, probably just Latias mostly. Other than that, nothing's really too yeah. annoying. Uh, other than that, I can yeah, kind of well, take yeah. on everything on his team. What's your onion on the uh, on the matchup, Ian? Yeah, well, um, the matchup as I saw it was, uh, um, I, I noticed Celesteela was, like, was, like, a really good pivot into your, um, three psychic types, but, like, as most of your psychic types get, um, some form of coverage for it, like, like, um, Thunderbolt on both Gardevoir and Latios, I realized I was going to play a lot more recklessly with it, um, um, when I saw the matchup, I saw La I saw Latios went in pretty hard. I also saw that like um, offensive with Selgor, you didn't really have the best switch into, and um, Fire and Electric hit you hard. So Rapidash would have been a pretty good option too. Yeah, I'd say I didn't really prep too hard for Selgor and Rapidash, but I mean I handled them all right. Anyways, let's get into the team. Uh, immediately, first mon on is Gardevoir. Gardevoir just puts in the finest of work, outspeeds a lot of his team. He can't switch into it too well. And it also helps break through things like uh, Needle Queen and T-Tar, especially. Uh, because Indeed. in this game, you'll see that Talonflame is going to be the win con here. It smashes through him quite nicely. Uh, I have Substitute just to try and uh, flex on him to see if I can get a sub up on like a free switch in to smash him around. Next up, we got Talonflame running Dual Stab Sword Dance Will-O-Wisp. If I can Will-O-Wisp the T-Tar on the switch in, it makes it so much easier. I didn't want to run Natural Gift Fighting, because if I, mis if I mispredicted with it, then I lost it, and then Talonflame is no longer going to get through T-Tar ever, which will be annoying. And looking at his team, Talonflame puts in so much work, he cannot switch into this at all. If I get a Sword Dance up, he gets, he gets, uh, he's catching these wings. I was catching these wings irregardless, but... <laughs> I ran a uh, Gale Wings because if he had a Selgor, I could lead off with this Brave Bird him to bring him. Or no, I was gonna Will a Wisp him to break his Sash and then Brave Bird him, so he only got one spike up. Uh, next up is Chestnut. It's gonna switch into mostly Zygarde, uh, Rotom to an extent, Mega Kang. No, not Mega Kang. I have Mana Buzz for that. But Titar because Titar is annoying, and I don't want and I want Titar gone for Lot for Talon Flame. Once Titar's gone, Talonflame can go in, so I wanted a good switch in to try and bop it. Spikes are good. I ran Spikes Leech and Spiky Shield, because I like running uh, Seeds Protect versus Celesteela's to give them a taste of their own medicine. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's a great idea, Mr. TC. It's a great idea. <laughs> I forget what my EVs are for. This game was six weeks ago. 
Uh, Spadef Necrozma's up next with Photon Geyser Moon. You can read the screen, you know what moves I have. Uh, it's Anita Queen switching, Primarina switching, Rotom switching, somewhat of a Latios switching, not too much because you can just kind of calm mind Z Draco and destroy me and my family. Uh, it doesn't touch Celesteela at all, but I figured I'd be okay over Celesteela with like Mandibuzz and T Flame or Talon Flame there for switch ins. And yeah, Stealth Rock, get him up. Because his removal isn't great. It's Rotom and Latios, and I didn't think he'd bring Defog Latios. I think he'd be offensive. Uh, next up is Rocky Helmet Mandibuzz to, to handle Mega Kangaskhan. So just kind of bully him around. Uh, he hits me, I hit him back for basically the same amount of damage. Uh, I have Taunt and Whirlwind. I'm pretty sure the speed means I outspeed Celesteela all the time because uh, I didn't want to lose to a setup Celesteela and under prep for it. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. Whirlwind to get I'm... rid of it, Taunt to make it stop doing its thing. Yeah, and I mean Rocky Helmet. Like when you're running a Mega Kang, it's gone. You gotta, you gotta like uh, prepare for the Mega Kang just running Rocky Helmet. Oh, uh, it's something yeah. when you draft Mega. When you draft Mega Kang, it it's kind of like a psychological thing. Like you force your opponent to run certain items because like you don't want Mega Kang just getting out of control. And if you run a Rocky Helmet and they hit you, they're losing a third of their HP right there. Exactly. So. Yeah. And last up, we got Manaphy yeah. with Surf, Ice Beam, Sub, Tail Glow with Lefties. The sub was there, so if it was me versus Celesteel, I could try and get it up versus Elite Seed or a Protect. Because uh, I didn't think he'd run Giga Drain, I didn't think he'd have the move slots for it. I th thought he'd more likely be Dual Stab or try and be a Rock move for Talon Flame. Uh, anyways, that's the team. We're going to pop into the replay, which is right here. Does it even show properly? Oh, not really, but we're going to go with it anyways. Wait, can I switch this? Hold on. <laughs> Replay? This? That? No. No, wait! Is this... No? Okay. You know what? This is this is fine. You know what? We're just going to... We're just going <laughs> to leave it. We're not going to bother with this. Anyways. Uh, yeah. He brings Titar, Rapidash, Aselgore, Latias, Celesteela... Primarina. That's what the fucking thing is called. Uh, yeah. I see the Rapidash, and I'm like, hold up, I don't really switch into it, but I have Mandibuzz and Manaphy. Mandibuzz is kind of expendable, because I don't see Titar, so it'll kind of come in willy-nilly when I feel like it. Uh, like I said in the team preview, I see a Selgor, I'm going to lead Talonflame to try and burn, plus Brave Bird it. He leads Rapidash, I'm going to go hard on Mandibuzz, hoping he Flare Blitzes me. Devils into Primarina like a beast. Ian, what's, uh, what's your onion on that play? Um, I mean... Actually, in my prep, I ran um, Fizz Def Free Marina because it actually could take a plus two um, Brave Bird. Not a plus two Z move, but a plus two Brave Bird or just a regular Supersonic Sky Strike. Plus, um, it was all. I also brought Pre Marina mostly all right, for. You're talking too um, long. We're moving on. <laughs> We're going to go into Necrozma because I don't want to take a move blast. He creates me and gets a Spatak drop. Oh, this hacks. This is horrible. He can do a Selgar as I get oh, my rocks up. Oh, shut up. That actually, that actually <laughs> helped me. As... Oh, yeah. This is great. This is great. So, because of the, sp because of the Spatak drop, Photon Geyser becomes a physical move, which did, which overall did more to his Selgor than a minus, or than a, than a regular Photon Geyser would do because he was minus defense. Yeah, I, I didn't really calc it like that because I was like, Okay, it's a special movie. You have a special attack drop. It's gonna do like maybe forty percent, <laughs> if that. And I'll be fine. And then, and then I saw seventy-five. I'm like, what the hell is this? I thought, I thought that was hilarious. I tried to go Mandibuzz to try and preserve it. I thought, I thought he was specced from the damage. Turns out he was E belt, and he gets a T spike up. And I see that T spike, and my heart just sinks because I realize I lose to this T spike. I can't switch over to Supreme Arena, I just sacked Mandibuzz, I figured it was expendable enough. I bring in Gardevoir to get the Mega up and try and bop a switch in. Uh, he goes Celesteela, I think I Hyper Voice, no, I T-Bolt the first time like a beast. Uh, I knew he'd protect, he didn't want to risk the Thunderbolt roll, so I switch hard into Talonflame to try and start getting some threat, uh, threaten on him. He protects. Uh, I will have thinking he'd go T-Tar for the first time, but he, but as Ian has told me he was scared shitless and did not want me to throw stance ever. Ain't that right, sir? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> never. I would never let a use sword dance in my face. 
<laughs> so he stays in like a mad lad, gets the leech seat up. I'm going to go Manaphy here uh, as he doubles into Prima Arena. I thought, again, he would go T-Tar, but I didn't want to stay in Double Willow. I didn't want to take Leech Seed plus Sand and whatever. I go for Tail Glow here, and I figured this is where he would just drop his Z-Move and kill me. But because Ian's a beast and has the investment, he goes for Calm Mind, because he also was pretty sure I would sack Necrozma rather than attempting to just Ice Beam him. If yeah, I ice beam, he would have taken like 60 or 70, I think, which would have been nice because it probably, he he would have been closer to dying after rocks, which would have been good. But yeah. I didn't want to lose Manaphy. Well, Zedrico I mean, I was kill. well. Um, in my opinion, I figured I could get a roost off on um, Chestnut or Manaphy later, so I was mm -hmm. willing to get, get into that sort of thing. And yeah. if you were intent on staying in with Manaphy, I would have dropped the Z move next turn. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, so Zedrico at that. neutral would have killed me, so I had to switch out. He predicts it very nicely, gets the Necrozma, gets a plus one boost. I have to go Gardevoir, and basically I have to bank on him being Z Draco and not Ghostium, or else uh, I just lose. <laughs> I, if he was Ghostium, I, I lost. If he was Dragonium, I was still in the game. That's basically how that turn went, so I had to go Gardevoir. I was I was almost Z Ghostium, but I changed it to Z Dragonium because um, I was a bit more scared of Manaphy than I was a Gardevoir. Yeah, so we go Celestial in the Hyper Voice. Uh, since I'm an absolute beast, I knew he'd either go for a Protect to get extra poison damage off or a Hail Mary Leech Seed to try, just in case I do whatever. So now I'm Gardevoir behind a sub, which means I can kill him with T Bolt. Uh, I guess he didn't. You didn't. I guess he didn't. Uh, Protect in case I was Calm Mind, right? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, either way, it didn't really matter. I would have just died to poison the same turn. He goes Rapidash. This breaks Ian's heart because I got to kill it with Psychic. <laughs> yeah. I, I just needed to, uh, I just basically needed to get rid of the sub because, like, <laughs> I, I was looking at my team members and Rapidash was the most expendable. It could, it didn't one shot uh, Manaphy. The only thing it would have been around for was um, just not, and I could beat that with, um, and I could uh, beat that with um, Wadia, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Yeah. So I sat Gardevoir, I didn't want him doing any kind of shenanigans. I go into Talonflame because now he's in range of the Z Brave Bird, and I didn't want to risk him staying in whatsoever, I just throw it off. And what's funny is that this 36% roll was the absolute max roll I could have gotten if he was no HP and no defense, which told me his exact spread. I don't know if you yeah. knew that, Ian, but that was the exact max roll that turn. I didn't know that, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> I got I hard, did not I got hard Chestnut. That. I almost stayed in to Sword Stance and Flex on him if he predicted Chestnut, but I couldn't, couldn't bring myself to do it, and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, he goes Latias I... I throw my seeds on him. Uh, I think I go Manaphy here. Do I? Or what do I do? I go Manaphy here, because I figured you'd roost up. Uh, I think... Mm, what do I do? I just kind of... Ooh, what, like, okay, there we go. Wait, what? what is, it's lagging again. Stop it! Uh, Manaphy's taking every kind of damage. He goes for a Calm Mind. I think I... Oh, I'd Shell here like an idiot. <laughs> I definitely should have Ice Beamed you for damage, but whatever. Uh, right here, yeah. I think, is where he drops his Z-move and just destroys me. Yeah, there's the Z-move and just kills me. Right here is, uh... Right here is a fifth, is basically a big 50-50. We haven't run through it yet, but... So, if he's Dragon Pulse, I lose either way. If he's Draco, I can go Chestnut on the Draco. He'll be at minus one. I can come back into Talonflame and get a freeze Sword Stance up. His Draco will do around like 40%. And then basically it comes down to, will Talonflame die to Recoil plus Sand? We didn't run through it. To, yeah. We didn't like run any sort of things to check if it would. Uh... So we don't know if it did or not, but I clicked Chestnut, but then Ian took like 30 seconds and I was like, does he know what I'm going to do here? So I cancel my move and go for Swords Dance to, tr to predicting him to predict my Chestnut, seeing my game plan. Unfortunately, I was too far ahead on the plays. He hits the Draco. Because he figured that even if I did go Chestnut, I probably would die to Recoil plus Sand. Uh, 
He sacks his T-Tar. I think I just Drain Punch immediately. Yeah, I just Drain Punch. <laughs> Got that extra differential point. I mean, I, I I was kind of stupid. I didn't know your last move. I didn't want you to, like, throw a lead seed on me, be like, seed synthesis, because I didn't actually have a psychic move, and I wasn't sure if you were, like, spadef, and I didn't want, like, some miracle move, but then I just saw Drain Punch, and I'm like, okay, well, he, he doesn't have the move slots to be all those things now. Yeah, so basically he so, played the ultra safe game because there's no re he had no reason to not play safe. I flex on him with a spiky shield right there, but at the end of the day, he's just going to Draco and, and kill me right here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So we're going down 0-2. Uh, if you're smart, you already saw this game on Ian's channel. Wink, wink, because his channel is amazing. Uh, anyways, we go down, uh, we go down what, 0 and 1 minus 2. My apologies. And our next week yeah. is against Magic, aka David, who's rocking the Z Mew, Toxic Effects, Kiram, Zora, Wark, Durant, Z, Sunfisk, Mega Stardex, Bulu, Crobat, Swampert, Audino. First thing I see, <laughs> I have three psychic types. He does not have good psychic resists. And. By week two, this is where me and Ian were mocking and helping each other build every single week, and that's what the first thing he noticed too. Yeah. And so, first yeah, thing... I mean, I looked at his team and like the only, yeah, we both saw like his psychic resist is Mew, and his only psychic community is Zoroark, which can't really come in on anything. Yeah, and so uh, Scarf Lottie here because it can sweep pretty easily. Uh, it'll bop through Crobat. It'll. Bob through a DD Zard, it'll bob through a Scarf Bulu or a Scarf really anything on his team. All I need is this Mew Weekend. So I run yeah. Dragon Pulse because it does enough to Zard X where it's not an issue. Uh, next up is Fizz Def Chestnut for the Durant actually. With this defense, it can live a plus one Z move from Durant. I think we calc the Savage Spin out. Uh, this yeah. also helps versus a physical Zoroark, it helps versus Bulu, it helps versus Swampert. Um, Roar is so that I can roar him out if he tries to set up with Zard on me. Otherwise, I'm just set up fodder basically, which sucks. Spikes are so good here. His only removal is Mew and Crobat. Which, I mean, Crobat's alright of like removal, but it gives me free switch-ins into my Steelix, which you'll see that I brought this week. And then I can just get my Rock right back up again. Uh, next, up yeah. we're, next up, we're running Gardevoir, obviously, because Psychic, again, is so good. With Hyper Voice, Psychic, uh, Sub, Heal Bell. We were kind of like contemplating between like Calm Mind, maybe Wish Protect, maybe Sub, Calm Mind even. Finally, we agree on like some sort of uh, sub heal bell in case I need to get um, statuses off of either Mandibuzz or Chestnut to try and wall his team later. Um, yeah, or even, unfortunately, or even Talon does because happen. never mind, we were offensive. Never, yeah, well, we were, yeah, we had a somewhat yeah. defensive set, but we were offensive EVs, and anyways. We got, like the idea of sub heal bell, which you'll see comes into play really nicely in that battle. Uh, next mm -hmm. up, next up we got Mandibuzz chilling here. Uh, mixed defenses. These mixed defenses were some sort of Zoroark checking EVs because Zoroark was a pretty big threat to my team. Three psychics. He's a dark type. Blah blah blah. I fixed this psychic trend later. Don't even worry about it. Uh, Oh, also, Gardevoir was a really good switch into Kiram, which my team kind of lacked a switch into, which is why we kind of played a Wish Protect, but either way. Next up is Talonflame. I think... I forget what... Yeah, we were debating between Talonflame and Manaphy. We figured those either one of those two would be good. And I figured having Gale Wings with Z Brave Bird would be good, in case Zard got out of hand, or in case Crobat got out of hand. Just a nice, like, little backbone, uh, like, smacker in the back. Uh, taunt Toxic to try and whittle down the Mew more, as well as taunting Toxapex, as well as taunting Stunfisk. I don't even think I don't think he had Stunfisk this game. Either way, he didn't bring whatever that used to be. Just and taunt. this also hardwalled a um. It also hardwalled a non Stone Edge um Bulu and a non Stone Edge um Durant. Basically, yeah, yeah. Talonflame could come on both of those if they weren't gonna Stone Edge me. And then finally, we have <laughs> Steelix. I laugh at my nickname every time. I forget what the EVs do again, but it, this is mostly um, Crobat answer as well as it can help versus Zoroark and Kiram. Uh, health versus Durant, health versus Mew, kind of because I can talk to him, yeah. And it's also it's a stealth rocker, so that, or yeah, it's a stealth rocker because I didn't have one this game. Anyways, we get into the battle here. Uh, we see Crobat, Peck, Zoroark, Mew, Zard, and Durant, obviously. 
Latios is gonna pull through very nicely this game, you know, like before even seeing what he brought. Uh, you know, what's your what's your onion on what he brought here, Ian? What's your onion? Um, well, I mean, Zoroark. Um, the biggest threat to to your team is honestly Zoroark and Crobat. Like, I, like if Steelix goes down, I can see Crobat being a hard threat to your mm -hmm. team because of that other thing. Um, all all you really need to do is not let um is not let um chestnut or mandibuzz get too weakened so zoroark isn't a problem just don't um just keep your um ways of dealing with zard aka starflotty healthy and I, I don't see anything that we didn't necessarily prep for it i think we were prepared for everything he brought the only issue is of course Mew, depending on the set so <laughs> you never know what Mew's gonna be we figured he would be defensive to try and be the latios answer which you'll see he does end up being anyways i lead off with mandibuzz I don't know the exact logistics behind it, but he leads Crobat. This could be Zoroark, I think. And when he goes for U-turn, I, if I remember correctly, that U-turn meant he was banded. I think, I think, I'm pretty sure yeah. he was guaranteed banded. I go for foul play to try and see if he's Zoroark or Crobat. That does so much to Mew, considering he's a defensive set. I miss Toxic, which is kind of unfortunate. I was okay taking the Synchronize because I had Heal Bell. I think Ian was trying to say something and I was so very rude to interrupt him. <laughs> I mean, I was just gonna say something funny. I still remember um, me and uh, TC talked about this a lot. Um, David in the chats, um, both before and after the match, was complaining about Mew because he keeps getting foul played and it would do like forty five. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no <laughs> how about doing twice yeah. in a row? <laughs> Told by a band of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he goes talk to here. Shows Rocky Helmet, or uh, I was very rude again, Ian, I, I deeply apologize. Just, just go, it's fine. I don't care. Alright, fine. <laughs> Foul Flame, I learned my lesson from last week and I taunt him so he can't get a T-Spike up, which he tries to. And you'll see he tries multiple times, but I taunt him every single time, because I'm a beast! Uh, he, also, he shows Poison Jab, which is obviously for a guard, because it does more. As I roost up, yeah. taking too much uh, hazard, so I go Steelix. This is obviously Zoroark, but I was okay taking a flamethrower, just to get my rocks up. And so now I can like more distinguish Zoroark from other things. I was okay taking more damage again, because I figured Crobat wouldn't be too much of an issue. Gyroballum to get him into range of rocks, and then finally go into Mandibuzz. Uh, he goes Durant here, because as long as rocks stay up, Zoroark dies, and I won't have any illusion shenanigans, I'll know where he is. Uh, I just stay in, because I didn't really want to risk him setting up, I didn't want to switch out. I go Latios here because HP Fire will decimate him. Uh, he comes back into the ran here, which I thought was weird, and then he switches right out again. I'm like, okay, this was him scouting for Scarf because if he, because if he brought Durant versus me, I pro, I would have switched out thinking he was Scarf. But since I stayed in, he most likely knows that I'm already Scarf. Like he knows that I wouldn't risk Latios if I wasn't Scarf. Uh, I go into, yeah. I go into. Uh, Chestnut on the Toxic to try and get some spikes up. He brings in Mew. Uh, I figured he would recover or defog here, so I just get a spike up to waste his time. I go into Talon Flame because I think he'll again roost or uh, roost or defog. Taunt him so he can't do anything to end against. He goes Pex, which is kind of nice because I can actually go into Steelix. Because I've seen Poison Jab, I know he'll have recover. I've seen T spikes, and I figure his last move would probably be some kind of either knockoff. Or toxic. I don't. I didn't think he would be like dual stab. I think he would have other moves he want to bring. So yeah. I go Steelix, and then get my rocks up again to wait again waste his time so that he has to defog because he will defog before I will. I don't have defog. That's why. Wait, yeah, I don't even have defog. No, he'll defog. So I get the toxic off this time, which makes me less of a problem. I stay in again yeah. because so far he's only shown. He's only shown Toxic, Defog, Roost, and I know he only has one attacking move. It wouldn't be Psychic. I don't think that loses to both Gardevoir and Latios. I didn't think it would be Flamethrower, because then he loses to Latios again. And, and Talonflame. So I didn't know what his last move would be, but I figured Steelix could basically stay in and wall him. He goes Zard here, and just to uh, avoid shenanigans with him staying regular or subbing, I Gyro Ball. Um, it's because it broke a regular sub if he was max speed. Unfortunately, he is very bulky and very not too speedy, and Gyro Ball does no damage. 
Uh, it kind of sucked that he didn't kill me because now he has two flame charges up, and now I can't even go Scarf Lottie to try and revenge him. I have to go Chestnut, and basically, if he's Flare Blitz, I have to hope he puts himself in range of Talonflame's Brave Bird. Uh, luckily for me, he tries to set up a Sword Stance again so I can roar him out, and I have a huge sigh of relief there. He gets Durant, and he tries setting up a Hone Claws. I think I go for Spikes here. I get a Spike up, yeah, to annoy Mew more, make it take damage, make it have to defog so that, uh, that Latios can pull through. Uh, he goes for the Z move, which I knew I could live. Roar him out, get Pax, which is pretty lucky because I can heal up for free versus that. Get all the health back since this is back up. He goes into Mew, which I'm pretty sure he's just here to defog again, a shenanigan. So I go Gardevoir, because I'm pretty sure he's going to defog. Or, or no, he, no, yeah, he tops it here, which is a good plan on his part. But this is what I mean by heal bill comes into play here, because I'm going to go... I knew he would again heal or defog here as I go for sub, as he defogs. Uh, take some more toxic damage, and this is where heal bell is so good, because I can just get rid of this toxic. And now I'm Gardevoir behind a sub. And now I just get a kill. Oh. Psychic so does 90 to the pack, which is so good. Uh, Spit F drop didn't matter, I was going to hyper voice him no matter what anyways. Brings in Durant, gets absolutely obliterated. Gardevoir is so <laughs> powerful. Oh, brings in yeah. Crobat. I have to sack Gardevoir here, which kind of sucks, I wish I kind of had it. Or it would have been nice keeping it around, but I had to keep the speed control for, for Zard, and I felt Chestnut was nice to have around to try and... Because it can switch into Mew, because again, I still haven't seen his last move yet. But again, I don't think it's Psychic or Flamethrower. So I stay in the Sag Gardevoir. I wish I could have kept it. Uh, coming to Latios because I'm Scarf. He switches out. So this further proves to him that I'm Scarf because I brought it hard into Crobat. Uh, he goes Mew, takes 17. I can't stay in to just hit him again. He misses a Toxic, which is unfortunate, but I mean, kind of justice for my Toxic miss earlier. But he's, er, okay, never mind, nothing happened. He just went for it again. <laughs> I get a spike up and then he takes more damage and around somewhere here, yeah, he roosts here. I synthesis and I think it's right here. No, he roosts again. I I figured he'd try and get the health back. I get him another spike up and yeah, it's right here. Right here, I figure he's gonna go into Crobat because I can't do anything to him and he just gets a kill. So he's gonna go Crobat and I'm gonna double into Latios because I couldn't let Crobat get a free kill. Right here. Apparently he wasn't 100% sure that I was Scarf yet, and so I got the kill, and right there is where the biggest threat to my team goes down, and I feel comfortable that I can just take this game, take this game once, yeah, I, I feel I can just take this game with a Talonflame Dragon Pulse. Uh, I go to Talonflame because if he, no matter what he did, I was going to taunt him, so he would stay low. If he defunked, he'd stay low. If he uh, roosted, he'd stay low. So I just keep him low. I think it's Brave Bird to yeah, Brave Bird to kill him. Uh, he goes into Zard, I think. I just drop the Z move to put him into range of Talon or to put him into range of Latios. 100. Put him in range of Psychic, sorry, so that I could kill it, then Toxapex and win. He goes for yeah. Flame Charge into Dragon Claw. He couldn't do anything. I was just gonna keep him low. Go Latios, Psychic twice, and that's the game. So we make back our differential, we're 1-1-0, one, one, which is nice to be. What's your onion on that game, Ian? I kind of talked that entire time. <laughs> uh, I mean, I didn't really have too much to say. It was kind of, it, it kind of ended up becoming um, a bit straightforward because that, that new set was um, relatively annoying, but I think the turning point was when, um, was when you did make that double into... Mm -hmm. um, Lottie, because at that point it was a 50-50, because, like, if he got Crobat in, he probably would have forced the sack on Chestnut, I would have probably said. Most likely, I Out think, of the yeah. Left, and then he would have been forced to go into um, Lottie, and at, at that point you might have had to click Dragon Pulse, or to try and predict Mew, or you might have needed to click Psychic just because you mm -hmm. couldn't risk Crobat, and it became a lot more sloppy from there. Yeah, it would so. have been harder to break through. I would have had to try and get Crobat into range of Dragon Pulse, otherwise he could just go Mew. And while plus, they were both, um, yeah. Plus he did attempt to go for a game with Zard, which I thought was odd that he did that in front of a Steelix, because you could have just came out with Talonflame and revenged him. He went for Sword Dance when he was... um. No, I was on Chestnut. He, uh, um, he went for sword stances. He went into Chestnut, and I don't 
I was kind of surprised he didn't just try to go for damage, considering if you go hard in the chest knot, there's probably only one reason you would do that. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, so if he got maybe a little bit of chip damage, um, there would have been... Durant would have killed me, yeah, because I, I would have been in range of the spin out. Yeah. Yeah, but, either um, way, good I, game, I, came down to the wire. And so we're going to our next yeah. game, which was versus Young Sterbill. Oh, Fortress, that's what I had. I got rid of it immediately, which is why I didn't remember about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Fortress. Yeah, Anyways, I, I remember. Yeah. So Bill's chilling. I, I think this was the one game the entire season you brought it. Yeah, and then I got rid of it immediately. I only had it because I wanted more spin, but I didn't ever feel like I wanted removal. I don't, I don't know. I, just, I didn't like it. I just wanted it there for spin and hazards. Anyways. Fortress is garbage. Fortress is garbage. It's, it's the worst bug steel type by far. Oh, yeah. Anyways. So, uh, we're chilling with uh, Dunkster Bills. got Zapdos, Pharaoh, Lycanroc, Dust, Arcanine, Comfy Cryogon, Omega Lopunny, Milota, Koopa U, Garbodor, and Mudsdale. Uh, so first up, okay. uh, you need to check low punny. When you see low punny, you gotta check it immediately. So I bring Rocket Helmet, Chestnut. And what's nice about this is, uh, with Bulletproof, Ferrothorn can't even gyro ball me, meaning that I just get free subs versus it, and sub seed can kind of be annoying to whittle his team down. Uh, just max fizz def to take on low punny. I didn't need leftovers to avoid a two at KO because it only did like 30 with return or high jump kick or whatever. Uh, then uh, Mandibus is up next. This is the Hoopa U switch in. I was Wakanda to take the Thunderbolt. That's about all it is. U-turn can kill him back. Taunt for Pharaoh. Knockoff is annoying for him to deal with. Uh, Gardevoir is next. I didn't need much speed on it. I think I just sped crept. I forgot what, but I didn't need... Oh, probably... I think was... Did I speed crept I think Hoopa? Was it Hoopa? I think it was Hoopa. Yeah, Hoopa. I just put Disable on here. What did I have before? Alright, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> We're bringing three moves Guard of War now because I forget what I. I clicked the wrong move by accident. Probably HP Fire? Yeah, HP Fire. Let's put that yeah, back on there. Yeah, HP Fire. Nope, fire, nope, we're yeah. bringing Fire Punch now. That's it. <laughs> I don't care about, <laughs> I don't care to fix it. Anyways, uh, Guard of War is straightforward. Calm Mind to set up on Comfy and Cryogonal, hopefully, my Lodic 2. Uh, this can break his team, which will be nice. Uh, next up, we got the Fortress. This is mostly. Uh, Ferrothorn, Lycanroc, uh, Comfy, Cryogonal, this is kind of here to... Mostly I wanted it just to spin because Ferrothorn can have his attack and be annoying. So I wanted to spin, it's also my Stealth Rocker because I didn't want to try and bring Steelix. Volt Switch is nice to get on out of there, get momentum, Gyro Ball for damage on whatever. Manaphy, uh, I forget what 88 uh, special attack EVs do, but it does something. Uh, this is just a very defensive setup, Manaphy, to try and smack through his team. Which, at the end of the day, you'll see that we're bringing Rock Polish, Necrozma with Photon Geyser, Heat Wave, Exazor. Which, once his team is whittled enough, this can sweep quite easily. Hopefully. Yeah, that's, hopefully. That's the, yeah. Hopefully, even, with, even with minus attack, Exazor guarantee kills Hoopa that doesn't have a berry, which is nice. Uh, we're gonna get into the game. So he has Hoopa, Cryogonal, Pharaoh, Arcanine, uh, Lopunny, Comfy, and what made me mad is that he had Lycanroc and Zapdos and more things that just... What else did he have? Lycanroc, Zapdos, uh, Milotic, Arcanine, Mudsdale, so many things that just made Talonflame invalid. But in this matchup, Talonflame would have gone in. Talonflame almost won turn one in a matchup like this, honestly. So that made me oh, very yeah. upset. I wish I brought it, but the, the team he had, I couldn't bring it, and he probably knew that, which is why he was able to go a Talonflame weak team, because I couldn't bring it. Yeah. So I lead ah. off Chestnut, because I think he would try and lead off, like, Pharaoh or something to try and get Hazards up or lead Hoopa or whatever. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. Why did I lead Chestnut? They didn't beat anything else except for other than Fair. Anyways. He needs Arcanine, which sucks for me. I have to go Mandibuzz, because I don't really have a switch in. He misses Toxic, which is kind of unfortunate, but then he just does it again next turn. You turn out, I get Manaphy in here to threaten him out. Uh, I think, what do I do? I double into Fortress, predicting him to go either Ferrothon or Cryogonal. 
He then switches into Fairy Thorn to get my rocks up. I go hard Chestnut because I figured he would just get a hazard up and I can get a sub up here. Uh, he doesn't stay in. Unfortunately, I wish he would have tried to Toxic or T-Wave me, but he was smart enough to go into Comfy. Journey Kiss to break my sub. I think I just go for a Leech Seed here? Yeah. Go for Leech Seed, get some health back. I stay in the first time because I knew he wouldn't kill me no matter what, and I wanted to know what he was. I go for sub again because even though I'll get Leech Seed, I'll get, I can get Synthesis. If he stays in to break the sub, I'll get more Leech Seed and be pretty close to full. If he switched out, I would have just been behind a sub and could have Synthesis again. Good on health, so I can still be a low when he switch in. I don't want to stay in anymore. Go into Guard of Warriors. He makes a very nice Calm Mind play. Uh, luckily for me, I have Seeds up and I have Psy Shock, so he has to switch out. Uh, go for I go for my own Calm Mind as he goes hard into Pharaoh. Uh, I figure he'd be Akka, so I have to switch into uh, Fortress and not throw my guard away. Uh, what do I do? I go for Spin. I wanted the rocks gone. Right here, I figured he would try and predict the... Mandibuzz. And with my Akaberry, I lived in HP Fire anyways, so I decided to stay in to try and get as much damage on Hoopa as I can. Works out for me as he does Thunderbolt predicting the Mandibuzz. And then this time I go, oh, I went, oh, this is where I went Gardevoir? Oh, I forgot about that. What the hell was I doing? No. <laughs> Honey, no. <laughs> anyway, I go into Gardevoir knowing he'll just go for a special move and I can kill him this turn. Uh, he, re he reveals Roselli, <laughs> doesn't matter at that point, kill him. He gets an Arcanine, I then go into Mandibuzz here. Yeah, I go Mandibuzz because I won't take much. He wild charges, a very nice play, gets 12. <laughs> Never mind, did nothing. <laughs> he, that, was, that was just a flex play, he was just flexing on me. Uh, he goes Kraken as I can just U turn out again. I bring in Guard of War because I know I can take hits from Cryogonal. And I figured throughout most of this game that as long as I kept. Uh, Gardevoir at a reasonable health, it can take on Comfy and Cryogonal, and they won't really be too much of a threat. As well as Fortress is being alive is nice too, because he can still take a hit as long as it's not HP fire on Cryogonal or Comfy. Uh, I go into Chestnut to get him their sub up, start doing sub shenanigans. He gets Arcanine in, which is nice because I can seeds him, meaning he'll be forced to recover. I mean, I can get, oh, I don't know, I sent this. Yeah, because I, I didn't want to be weak to low bunny. Right, never mind. I made an alright play. <laughs> Going to Mandibuzz. Mrs. Toxic, big ol' matter. He loses because of that now. Luckily for me, I dodged it. <laughs> he heals up as well as I do. No, I U turn out. I want to keep momentum. As I go into Manaphy to try and set up and smash through something, um, he goes Fair Thorn. Yeah. No, I just surf right away. I want to damage. Because once Fair is weakened, then. Uh, whoever can go in. Uh, I go Fortress here, take some more rock. I wanted to try and... At this point I couldn't even spin, which kind of sucks. Wait. Why did I spin? What the hell? Am I retarded? <laughs> Apparently! <laughs> I, I thought the... I kind of thought the same thing when I saw it happen live. Why the fuck did I do that? <laughs> oh well. Uh, I side Fortress for no reason. I could have kept this for a sack. And just Volt switched into Chestnut. Oh well. Chestnut's in now, I'm gonna go Manaphy, because while this is seated, I can try and get up a Tail Glow, because... Because Fair... Because Fair, Fairthorn's guaranteed in range, even if it's Akka. He gets some good damage off with Draining Kiss, I Tail Glow up. And I believe... Yeah, he sacks Fairthorn here as I go for Surf. Uh, yeah. Surf him twice. Uh, I make a very bad play here. I started getting over... I started getting very cocky in this game. And to me, I thought... There's no way I can lose this game. All I need is a hit on Arcanine, and then uh, Necrozma wins. I was getting very overconfident here. So I think to myself, eh, mm -hmm. I'm very defensive. I can take a fake out into her turn and just kill this low punny. Perfect. Get rid of it. But because <laughs> I'm overconfident, I think, oh, I'm just going to stay in and do it. Knowing very well that high jump kick kills me. But I was thinking, eh, he might not know that. He might just go for a turn. Very bad play. Uh, he... Stay... So I go Necrozma. And... I'm basically just guaranteed a kill here, which is nice. And so in my head, I'm like, well, he might just try... He might just sack Arcanine here. So let me just Photon Geyser twice and kill that. And then once I get speed up, I can just win the game. Unfortunately, I should have gone for the speed boost. Because he returns me and does so much. I Photon Geyser here and kill him. I'm like, okay, whatever. 
but all of a sudden he brings in Triagonal. And I looked at my last four members. And I run some calcs. And everything dies. Except for Gardevoir. Because he's actually offensive offensive Kragonal with never melt ice. So but even then, Gardevoir lives, but then Comfy comes in and kills everything with a draining kiss. So my over cockiness and just sacking Manaphy and the Cross of Willy Nilly. I think I think if I slowed myself down and told myself, hey, you need to save these mons, you're gonna need them. I could have brought the game back. I think I could have won. I think I had the tools to do so. But I played that end game like a two-year-old. Uh, yeah, even in chat, I'm upset that, about how I played that end game. Uh, he freezes me with Cryogonal, which didn't matter. All it would have done is given the Gardevoir one more kill, and it would have been a 2-0. So unfortunately, we go down one and two in the first uh, in the first three weeks. Ian, what do you think about how I played that game? <laughs> Um, I think the end game was pretty bad. But... Yeah, that's an understatement, but... <laughs> I mean, once, uh, I mean uh, in all honesty, I think once um, Fortress went down, um, I think the real bad part of uh, bad part of it was um, when you didn't rock polish with Necrozma. I think Manaphy, at the end of the day, always would have ended up getting revenge killed by Cryogonal because if he was just never melt ice, he probably had freeze dry. Yeah, he, he did. He told me about that. Yeah. 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 So he would have. You would always gotten revenge. The only mod that I think could have won at that point was Necrozma and the and the not rock polishing up. That would have been your win con if you would have. Um, waited for an opportunity, or just went for rock polish there, then you probably could have won the game. Mm -hmm. Even then, the but, even then, what's bad is that uh, I just left Manaphy in to die versus Low Punny when Chestnut was at full health. I'm pretty sure, wasn't it? It was at full health that time. Yeah, it was. It was at like it was at like yeah, the it was point at, where it was at 73. Yeah, so I easily could have taken two returns or high jump kicks or whatever, and he faked out even two. So I should have gone chestnut there and saved Manaphy, because yeah. even if it wasn't gonna come in and save me from losing, it would have put the damage on Arcanine or whoever for Necrozma yeah. to sweep later again. And so. you could have um, you could have at least kept it to um, to get a huge hit off on Comfy or Arcanine later. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was really upset about how I yeah. played that end game there. Again, I think I had the tools to win, but I played. I will. I played it like a, like a seven year old. He played it well. I, he knew what he had to do. He took advantage of what I did wrong. Yeah, I will say one thing. Um, in prep, uh, this is something that that we both um did wrong. We didn't really prep for Cryogonal at all. Mm -hmm. We just thought, oh, we Cryogonal. I have I have Fortress. I have Gardevoir. I have Manaphy. It won't be an issue. Yeah, we didn't really think about like yeah, we were, how we were, much. Yeah, we were more scared have... of prepping for things like Lycanroc Rock and Zapdos. And we did discuss Talonflame for like a brief section, but TC pointed out how Talonflame um safe his team was as long as he brought any of the mons TC listed at the very beginning yeah. of the match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he so, had yeah, Fireum ZSD so kind of broke through Zapdos, but even then he still had yeah. Milotic. He had. Lycan Rock to revenge kill me. Yeah, that was more of a judgment call. Like mm -hmm. it could, like Talonflame could have won, but like it, it's like the matchup on paper, it didn't look like it worked, so we didn't want to take the risk. Like it could have won with what he brought, but we didn't bring it. That's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah. All right. Anyways, we're gonna cut it off here. This video is way longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, any last comments, Ian? Um, TC nah, sucks. Not really. TC sucks. Uh, moving on. GG, thanks for being here. Later, skater.